Dear students, if you have an RNA sequence or for that matter a DNA sequence, then you can extract ORFs, the open reading frames, and look at the longest ORF and code for the protein. However, what about the situation if you do not have the RNA sequence and the protein you are looking at or you want to sequence is unknown? So this is a very important problem. So this is what we are going to discuss in this module, how to sequence the proteins. As I just mentioned, that given the DNA and the RNA sequence, it is very simple to actually find out the protein sequence. You just go and find the longest ORF, convert it into the uh, amino acids by looking at the uh, lookup table and you are good. But in a situation where there are unknown proteins that are involved and you don't know which part of the genome or the RNA is actually coding for those proteins, then you are stuck. So, to help you in that situation, there is a process that is known as the admin degradation. What admin degradation does is that if you have this long sequence of amino acids, the polymerized chain that is forming the protein, then it starts plucking one amino acid at a time from the end terminus of the entire protein, and in this way, by taking out one amino acid at a time, it arrives at the entire sequence of that protein. So let's see how it actually works. The process is called the cyclic degradation of the protein and a molecule called phenyl isothiocyanate is used which attaches itself to the residue at the end terminus and breaks that uh, residue away from the uh, polypeptide or the protein chain and the molecular weight of that is measured as a derivative of phenyl isothiocyanate and therefore you are able to measure the molecular weight that is uh, there for each of the, these derivatives and hence sequence the protein. The important thing to remember here is that one amino acid is removed from the protein at a time. As shown in this example, here you have the phenyl isothiocyanate molecule given and what it does is it cuts this portion from the protein chain which of course is going on the, the right side and then it combines and forms a derivative and you can actually measure this derivative and hence arrive at the molecular weight of the residue. So once this is done, the protein that is remaining can be seen on this side. And of course, the same process can be repeated for residue number 2 or residue number 3 and so on and so forth. So in this way, phenyl isothiocyanate in Edmund degradation cleaves or cuts one amino acid from the protein at a time, thereby giving you an opportunity to look at it as a derivative and find which amino acid it was. However, this process since it involves the wet lab is slow and tedious. In this figure, you can see how this process proceeds and as a first step, you can have the first derivative. At the second step, you have the second derivative. At the third step, you can have the third derivative. But this process cannot go beyond 60 residues. So if this is the first one, this is the second one, it is very difficult to degrade the protein beyond the 60th residue. So essentially that would limit your capability to sequence larger proteins. So there are these drawbacks that are involved with admin degradation, although it is extremely useful for sequencing peptides and small proteins. 
So the first drawback, as I just mentioned, is that it can only go up to 60 uh, residues and that it's very laborious. So only 50, 40 to 50 amino acids can be done uh, in a working uh, R day and that there is a better method that is called the tandem mass spectrometry that we'll see later.